Hello again. Okay, in our last lecture we talked about in the entropy and the encoding of languages. Today we're going to talk about a couple of theorems that uh, Claude Shannon proved about this area. These are pretty deep theorems, but we're not going to go into them very deeply. Okay, so recall that the entropy of a language is sort of the measure of the efficiency of the most uh, efficient encoding. And you can, you can talk about the entropy of a language, but you can also talk about the entropy of a source of information. So for example, consider um, you know, a, a slow, a slow talking uh, Southerner and a fast talking New Yorker, for example, just to give some uh, stereotypes there. Right. They may be saying exactly the same thing, but the Southerner is producing sounds, information at a slower rate than the New Yorker often. And so we got to factor that in sometimes when you're talking about how much information you can send across a channel. Okay. Um, notice that if the channel is uh, of any size whatsoever and you have enough time and you have sufficient buffering on the other end so that you don't lose information as it comes across, then you can send an arbitrary amount of information across any channel. But what we would like to consider in this case is whether you can send information in real time across the channel if you don't have buffering. Okay, so Shannon proved a couple of, of very deep theorems. Um, the first one is called the fundamental theorem of the noiseless channel. So assume that you've got a channel and you've got no noise within the environment which is decreasing the capacity of the channel. Right. So what uh, Shannon said was basically this, or proved, was basically this. Um, if, the, if the size of the pipe is of a certain, well, it's a certain size, right? So you can send a certain amount of information across that. And you're producing information which is basically at a, at a smaller rate then you can send the information seamlessly through the channel. Well, the theorem is, is, is rather complicated and got all these uh, epsilons and things in it, but let's just see what it really says. Okay, so imagine that you've got a channel that uh, accommodates 100 bits per second, and you've got a language that has entropy of 5 bits per symbol. Then you could, then you could imagine that uh, in a perfect scenario, if you had a really good encoding, or I should say a perfect encoding, then you ought to be able to send 20 symbols a second across that channel because you can send 100, 100 bits. Uh, each symbol takes five bits in the best possible encoding. So that's 20 symbols, right? Um, well, suppose that you don't have a perfect encoding. That is that you haven't quite reached the entropy. Well, what Shannon proved is that you can always get arbitrarily close to the entropy. You can always get within epsilon of the entropy, no matter how small you make epsilon. So what's the upshot of this theorem? It says that you can always find in a better encoding that will get you arbitrarily closer to the entropy. You, you just have to work harder at it. And we've seen some examples of, do, of doing this. Okay, well what happens if you've got noise within the channel? or within the environment. Well, the noise reduces the capacity of the channel. And so we have a basically like a pipe that has some crud on the inside, and so the, the flow through the pipe is, is decreased some, somewhat. Well, you might imagine that if there's enough noise within the environment that you can't send any information across the channel because everything you send gets corrupted. So imagine you're in a noisy bar, for example, and you're trying to talk to somebody on the other side of the room, and you keep shouting at them, but they can't hear what you're saying, right? Well, what Shannon proved is that if there's any uh, bandwidth at all, then you can eventually get your message through, but you may have to make your Re, uh, encoding more and more redundant. So for example, your friend on the other side of the room, you may have to shout at him a thousand times, but eventually you'll get the message through. What is the upshot of that? Well, that means that no matter how noisy the channel is, uh, you can find an encoding with sufficient redundancy to make sure that you reliably convey your message. So for example, if we, if we think back to when we talked about covert channels, I said one of the ways to deal with a covert channel was to reduce the bandwidth of the channel by adding noise to the system. And that works to a point, but if you want to completely close the channel, that won't work because no matter how much noise you got in the environment, 
uh, the sender can come up with an uh, encoding that has sufficient redundancy that the information will get through. Okay, so what have we said? Well, we said uh, when we talked about entropy in general, that entropy provides a bound on the coding efficiency of a language. And Shannon's theorems show that uh, if you're in a scenario where you're trying to push information through a channel, through a pipe of some kind, that you, can, that you can do better and better and find better and better encodings to get closer and closer to the entropy, assuming there's no noise in the channel. And if there is noise in the channel, you can still get the information through, but you may have to make the uh, encoding more and more redundant. Thank you.